Hi, I'm Paris, and I'm excited to have in hand, and soon on the back of my arm, my new Stello Continuous Glucose Monitor. The Stello is from Dexcom, and it's the first over-the-counter continuous glucose monitor. No prescription needed. I picked this up for $89 for a month's worth of sensors. If you don't want to go the subscription route, which they say you can cancel anytime, I'll see in a couple months how easy that is. But if you just want a one-time purchase of it, it's $99. You can find out more about it at the link down below this video. I've already got the app on my phone, set up my Dexcom account. So basically it's been waiting for this to arrive. I'm going to take these out, figure out how to attach them somewhere around here, get them to talk to my phone and start monitoring my glucose. Let's see what's inside the box. It's smaller boxes. Two smaller boxes. Each box contains the device itself, which is basically a little laboratory that monitors your blood glucose, and a computer, and a Bluetooth antenna that can talk to your phone and send the signal there, and the battery, and the applicator that gets it installed onto your arm. I had something similar to this going through chemo four years ago. They put a thing about that same spot on the back of the arm, which 48 hours after the chemo finished, it would infuse um, medicine to increase my white blood cell count. It was a new Lastra infuser, and it, it doesn't really hurt. I don't imagine this one I will either. It's just a little bit surprising. It's sort of like a spring-loaded thing that feels like it's hit you with a rubber band, like someone just snapped a rubber band on you just for a second. Yeah, but it looks <laughs> impressive. This is going to be the applicator, and the device must be in there. I suppose I should probably take a look at the included paperwork. Time to get the reading glasses out for this. Oh, my over patch. I read about that. Start here. Now, I think you can do just about all of this with the app. I saw, I watched the videos. They have a series of videos that walks you through this. And what does this large included piece of paper say? It says, go get the app. It'll tell you what to do. The other included piece of paper unfolds into this gigantic thing, which I think has a lot of the information that the app is going to walk you through. But I think they want you to have a paper copy with it. So it has the warnings and precautions as well. So you can't say, well, you never told me that. Also, I realized they don't call this a continuous glucose monitor, though I call it that, because the FDA has specific um, requirements for that. They call this a glucose biosensor. I'm ready to get going with that applicator and install my device into the back of my left arm. I've actually gone ahead and shaved some back here, get rid of the hair. What worries me is where it says, make sure to choose a spot that has enough fat so that the sensor won't um, interact with bone or muscle. Sounds unpleasant. I, I used to weigh 275 pounds. I'm down to about 180 now. This used to be no problem and no concern. Now I'm thinking, is there really enough fat on there? Is that muscle? I'm thinking this is a good spot. This is what I'm going with. I've washed my hands. I'm taking my alcohol wipe, cleaning this area. It tells me unscrew the cap. The applicator uses a needle to insert a tiny sensor wire under your skin. The needle stays in the applicator, not in your skin. Oh, I see. The needle is going to insert the wire and then the needle pulls back out. Hmm. Press and hold the applicator firmly against the skin until clear safety guard is pushed in. Press the button while the guard is pushed in. Pressing the applicator firmly against the skin will unlock the button. Ah, okay. Then pull the applicator away from your skin. Sensor stays there and all is well. Here we go. It's just like a little rubber band snap. Boy, I really don't have to <laughs> worry about hitting muscle in that arm. There's none there. Okay. Yeah, there's a needle in there. Okay, that's what's going to get applied to my skin. So it's one poke every 15 days, or it's poking the finger all the time every day to accomplish the same thing. So, if I pick my area, keep this where I can press the button on my thumb, and this clear part goes down. So once you've pressed it all the way down, I think that releases the activation for the button, and then you can 
then it allows you to push the button which allows the spring to sprawling and there you go okay <clears throat> if it helps do this in front of a mirror I'm watching the screen here <laughs> trying to think where it's not going to interfere with sleeping or sitting and putting my arm back against the chair or something okay so the clear applicator showing so I've really got to shove it up there and push the button right like a little rubber band okay I believe I have applied it Ooh, that's what it looks like inside now okay there's a thing on there I don't see blood pouring out. That's good. So I'm supposed to... Ow! Now it hurts a little. Now I'm going to um, do this to make sure that the outer sticker is going to stay on the skin. Because this has got to be waterproof. I've got a shower. I can't go 15 days without showering. Okay. Do that three times. And then it said to press and hold the center part for 10 seconds. Okay, no lights or anything here. We've got a whole computer laboratory going on in that little thing, and then it's disposable. That's a hard thing to believe when it's done. I don't know if you're supposed to recycle the battery, but it's disposable, and you just put another one on. Okay, so next is the cover that goes on top. That just creates a better seal around it, because if you get the water in there, whatever, you, you, it, you're looking at 45 to 50 bucks per each of these so you don't want it to go bad early I think I may need to go over to the mirror to do this because I even saw on the Dexcom websites video the guy who's doing this for the video the guy the professional employee of the company had a hard time getting this on I'm gonna go over to the mirror be right back okay I peeled off the green part and again a few more times around make sure it's securely fastened and it should be in warm-up mode now. Are people going to see this when I'm walking around? No, I've got it just far enough up. I don't think people will see it. Okay. Back to the phone. The longer you keep the patch dry and sweat-free in the first 12 hours, the longer it will stick to your skin. Aha! So it's not good to do this at night when you're going to get up the next morning and shower. It's better to do it earlier so you get a long time for that adhesive to make a good seal. When it gets wet, gently pat it dry as soon as you can. If it peels off your skin, trim off the peeled parts and put a new overpatch. I don't think they gave me any extras. I know you can buy them from their website in uh, different patterns and different skin tones. Okay, pairing code. Find the pairing code on the applicator. And yes, there's a QR code on the back here. Take a photo and they should... Well, it's not going to talk to this. It's going to talk to this. Okay. I got my number. Searching. Keep your phone within 20 feet of the sensor. Okay, it's asking me, would you like to pair? I don't think I need to give it <laughs> access to my contacts and call history. Yes, my arm is calling. Pairing complete. Keep your phone within 20 feet of the sensor. Throw out the applicator following local guidelines. 21 minutes remaining. Sensor is warming up. While it's warming up, I'll briefly tell you my reason for wanting to try this out. It's because I did change my diet and lifestyle about five years back, lost a fair amount of weight, but then got diagnosed with cancer, went through three years of cancer treatment, and found at the end of all that, with all the other side effects of that treatment, that um, my heart, my coronary calcium score had gotten so bad over the few years, even though I was eating so well, or thought I had been eating so well. Now those cancer treatments, they're hard on you cardiovascularly, but there's nothing I can do about that now. What I do want to do though is make sure that I really am not stressing my system in terms of glucose spikes and having insulin resistance, which I've had before. It's gotten better. So I would really like to get that to optimum level so that you know my heart doesn't plug up any more than it already is. It's lunchtime here. I haven't had lunch yet. I did have breakfast about three hours ago. Some steel cut oats with some berries, some cinnamon, um, a banana, and a couple tangerines. So I'm expecting, since it's what, 
about three hours since then that um, I would think my glucose should show up around 100. My fasting glucose has been for quite a while now high 90s, which I always thought that was good because it's not over 100. I was pre-diabetic. I would have it in the 110s, 115s before I got things under control. So I thought I was doing so much better. But then I hear about people who have good glucose control and they say, oh, a healthy fasting blood glucose is in the 80s. Oh, has mine ever been as low as 80? So my goal, whether it's realistic or not, is to get my fasting blood glucose at least down 290, a little under 90 would be nice to have my A1C down from 5.3, which I know is normal and supposedly good, but I need it to be excellent. I want to see if I can get that down to 5. And the next time I get my fasting insulin levels tested, I want that to be in the single digits. I've had that up as high as the low 20s, more recently in the mid to lower teens, but I like single digits. I think seven and below is considered really good. So eventually I'd like to get to that. Also, I've heard some early reports, people who just got this saying that doesn't quite measure up with their finger poke. And this doesn't have a calibration feature like some of the other um, continuous glucose monitors where a couple times a day you're supposed to do a finger poke to make sure it's correct and to calibrate it. This one doesn't have that, but to test out its accuracy, Fortuitously, tomorrow morning, I have a follow-up blood work I'm going in to do at the doctor's office. And so that will be fasting blood work after 16 hours of not eating anything. And this will be running, so I'll get to compare that tomorrow and I'll include that in the video so we can see how close to what the doctor's official professional blood test shows for my glucose and what this shows. Well, here's my first reading from Stello. And it's quite a surprise because that seems awfully low to me. Now down here, there's going to be a graph that goes across and I'm supposed to be in this green band if my glucose is in the correct range. And this green band here at the bottom goes from, I think, 140 to 70 for the glucose. So I'm down, my first dot is down there at the bottom. This is supposed to be my normal range. It also says my glucose is slowly falling, which is a surprise too, since it's lower than I ever remember seeing it and I'm not even fasting. So what does all this mean? Well, I have read from some folks who've tried this out over the last couple days. They found it started off with numbers they weren't really expecting, but they said after a few hours, it sort of, I don't know why it would matter, but it sort of does a better job of figuring out what your glucose is. But fortunately, I've got my appointment tomorrow morning to have the blood draw at the doctor's office, and I will get that glucose and compare it to what, what this says at that time, by then it should have sorted itself out and gotten used to me and hopefully be giving me accurate readings. And I'll show you that as soon as I get those results. Right now, since I missed my lunch window, I'm still gonna go have some um, edamame and an apple, I think. And then I'll be very curious to see what this meter shows. It gives me readings, updated readings on the phone every 15 minutes, but I believe it actually takes a reading every five minutes. So a few hours in, everything seems to be holding up well. I've been checking my phone a lot to see what numbers I've been getting. And it was real interesting to see the response that this saw when I had my lunchy snack of the edamame and an apple. Let me show you. The Stello seems to be working fine sending uh, updates regularly to my phone. It's been, I haven't felt anything more, no twinges of pain. Sitting on the sofa with my arm back against the sofa, I don't feel anything. Going to bed tonight, I'll see how it is. And of course, tomorrow morning, I'll get my blood tested to see the accuracy. It's still trending awfully low for what I would expect my regular blood sugar to be. There are so many choices and you don't want to stress. You want your health food and home receiving only the best. That's what we're here for. We give honest reviews. Paris DX.